especially honored to be uh, in the association of such an exalted, distinguished, and very successful God Brother, His Holiness Radhana Swami. It's not the first time, and I hope it's not the last time that I go on Parikrama with him. Somehow, by the causes, mercy of the Lord, a few years ago we went on a, a Bangladesh Yatra. Um, it was a little different than this Yatra. There was about eight of us. <laughs> And as I look out now, I, I heard there's 3,800, but to me it looks like 8,000 <laughs> devotees. But whether the group is big or whether the group is small, it's always very nice to be with Maharaj. He embodies, for me at least, he embodies um, so much of the... Um, ancient Parishads that we go on Purikrama to hear about. When you think of those sadhus in the ancient past and how they dressed and how they lived and how they spoke and what they accomplished, I always think of Maharaj speaking, we're able to go deep into the past and see how our acharyas lived, imbibe that way of life and their teachings and carry it on in modern day society. So we thank him very much for that. Uh, um, today, I feel somewhat like the substitute teacher. When I was a young man, When I was young, in school, sometimes when the teacher got sick, then they would, they'd call in a, a substitute teacher. And generally, the substitute teacher didn't come up to the mark as much as the real teacher did. And I feel that's the case today, because Maharaj has always been one of my Parikrama gurus. We have a few. We have, we have uh, Dina Bandhu Prabhu in Vrindavan. We have Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj as a Parikrama guru in Vrindavan. Uh, we have His Holiness uh, Bhakti Bringa Govinda Maharaj as a Parikrama guru. So we've been on Parikrama many years with them. And now the student has to become the teacher, but I feel like a substitute teacher. <laughs> when I was a kid, the substitute teacher came in and we just raised havoc in the classroom. Because <laughs> we knew we could get away with it. Just a substitute, so please bear with me, but don't raise havoc. <laughs> this is a very holy place. Um, I'd like very much to hear the pastimes from Maharaj. He's a He's a great storyteller, transcendental storyteller. I'm a storyteller also, but when he tells the story, it's three or four or five, six hours long. When I tell the story, it's three minutes. <laughs> it's called The Diary of a Traveling Preacher. <laughs> you can read it in a couple of, couple of minutes. This is Sri Kanda. We're blessed just to be in this very holy, auspicious place which retains much of its antiquity. 
I think it's safe to say that these trees are several hundreds of years old. Perhaps some of them witnessed the wonderful pastimes that took place here. It's a very, we have a word in English, uh, idyllic. It's a very idyllic setting. Kind of place that in days of yore, sadhus would retire to for their bhajan. Or in the case of our acharyas, they would not retire in the normal sense, they would come here to write the holy scriptures for the benefit of all the Vaishnavas that uh, were to come in the future. Because those Vaishnavas, especially the confidential associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Tri Galakala, they were able to see the past, they were able to see the present, they're actually able to see the future. And they understood the missionary movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We often quote in our lectures that in essence, this is a missionary movement. That was made very clear by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself when he stated that the Sankirtan movement his name, the name of the Lord, would be heard one day in every town and village of the world. He sent his most intimate associates, his most intimate disciples, the Sad Goswamis, the Six Goswamis of Vrindavan, not to Vrindavan, not for necessarily for retiring, but for setting the foundation for this very movement of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. There are other movements which are dedicated to spreading the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But I would say, and I am sure that you would also agree, this is the movement that Lord Chaitanya predicted. And Sridhar Prabhupada was that special spiritual ambassador that Lord Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chose to spread the Sankirtan movement all over the world. And by their grace, only we are sitting here today in this very, very uh, holy place. We have retired here also for a few moments, for a few hours, for a day for the same purpose in modern day language to recharge our batteries, to go out and spread that same message as best we can. And we pray that uh, our children and their children's children and their children's children for many, many generations to come will continue to spread this movement all over the world, which is distributing the chanting of the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. And continuing to flood the world with Krishna Prema, Braja. Prema. I was very much looking forward to coming here. I've been in Vrindavan for over a, a month in the association of other exalted God brothers trying to drink deep the mercy of that Dham and hearing the Leelas and chanting the holy names in such an auspicious place. But I asked special eagerness to come to uh, Mayapur Dham in association of exalted godbrothers and devotees. Because as we know, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radhe Krishna Nahi Anga, that divine couple who appeared in Vrindavan and manifested to the world forever their sublime eternal pastimes, decided to appear again 500 years ago. When the Lord Krishna left this planet 5,000 years ago, not long after, according to Kaviraj Goswami, a desire arose in his heart back in the spiritual world. He considered that he had come to this world and he had shown his pastimes to all of us as a sort of impetus 
for all of us to take up the path of bhakti, the path of devotional service, become devotees, become perfected, and go back to the spiritual world. But later he was considering that it was all a transcendental show. He didn't engage the conditioned souls in those pastimes. He decided as a Yuga avatar, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would come again to this world, and this time he would do something very special. He would not only perform the pastimes himself with his eternal associates, the same associates who appeared with him mainly in uh, female forms as Sakis and Manjaris, etc. Those same personalities would come in male forms here in Mayapur Dham and they would invite the fallen conditioned souls to participate in those pastimes even at that moment, at that time even here and now as you could say and taste the sublime nature of Krishna Prema that is the special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one of our acharyas has described that the pastimes of the Lord in the material world are in some ways even more appreciable than they are in the spiritual world. They're more relishable. How could that be? That those pastimes come to this nasty world. How could they be more appreciable? Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur has described that just as when one is selling jewelry, if you have a brilliant diamond, uh, a green stone like an emerald, a ruby, and you put it on a clear surface or a white surface, you can see it, but you can't see it so well. But if you put a dark surface under it, some black velvet, some dark purple velvet, dark green, you put the same gem there immediately, oh, because of the dark background, oh, you can see and you can appreciate it. Very nicely. In the same way, when the Lord performs his beautiful effulgent pastimes here in the material world with the darkness of ignorance behind it, this world is by nature dark. Ignorance is also a type of darkness. When those sublime pastimes are performed in this world, they're even more appreciable by his devotees. as a special characteristic to the Lord's pastimes, expressed through the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also has his pastimes in the spiritual world. In Goloka Vrindavan, there's a corner of Goloka Vrindavan, where at the same time that Krishna's pastimes are going on, Mahaprabhu's pastimes are also taking place. And some special souls, they have identities, both in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna and the pastimes of Gornitai. Simultaneously, those advanced souls, those great souls, are participating in both pastimes. What are they doing in Mahaprabhu's pastimes in the spiritual world? Congregational chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Hare, 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 Hare. Jiva Goswami says in his Bhakti Sandarbha, that the congregational chanting of the holy names is so important for devotees because he says even an aspiring devotee can get a deep taste of spiritual emotion when he's chanting together with many other aspiring devotees. Although he doesn't have any qualification because of the nature of that loud chanting in the association of so many devotees, he gets some deep spiritual emotion which gives him the impetus to go on further in Krishna consciousness. That is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is doing in the spiritual world. But there's a special nectar when those sublime pastimes come to this world. Krishna varnam tvisha krishnam shangopangvisha parshadam yagnai sankitan prayar yajantihi shumera shaha. 11th Canto describes that same Lord who appeared in the Pura Yuga, bluish black like the monsoon cloud, 
has again appeared in the Kali Yuga. Not bluish black, but in a very beautiful golden form. You can identify him because he's always surrounded by his loving devotees who are raising their hands, very loudly chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare Hare. And what is the nature of that kirtan? It draws in the conditioned souls. It melts the hearts of the conditioned souls. It convinces the conditioned souls to give up that futile attempt to enjoy this material world after millions and millions of births and join the nectarian Sankirtan party of Lord Chaitanya and become qualified to go back home, back to God. So I was thinking, yes, I want to go to Mayapur and I want to chant and dance with Radhana Swami Maharaj and all the thousands of devotees <laughs> from Chaupati and other parts of India because when they chant very loudly together, maybe I'll get a little, as Jiva Goswami has promised us and his Bhakti Sandarbha, maybe I'll also get a little taste of that spirit, deep spiritual emotion, Braj Bhakti, which will also impel me forward in Krishna consciousness and also help give me that missionary spirit to go back to my Prabhudat Desh Poland <laughs> and help deliver those poor souls by also loudly chanting Hare Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare So this is just one of the many places that we will visit Shri Kanda. Maharaj, when we were in Bangladesh, he said, yes, in Aduna Maharaj, you must join us on some other Purukamas, and we will, one day we will go to Mayapur again.
peacock feather reminded him of Krishna. Because as you know, our Lord Krishna carries a little peacock feather in his crown, always peacock feather. When this very advanced devotee saw that peacock feather, this was one sign of a Raghavuga Bhakta, or Prema Bhakti, he sees something that reminds him of the Lord, he goes into transcendental ecstasy. That's exactly what happened. Mukundadas fell off the raised platform onto the ground and began manifesting various ecstatic symptoms of love of God. Now you can imagine the Muslim king. The Muslim king would most likely have very little, if any, knowledge of Krishna consciousness. But out of respect, he got off the raised platform and went down and saw these symptoms of, of Mukunda Das, and he said, Sir, what is the problem? And Mukunda Das, very humble devotee, he said, No, no, sir, it's just some epileptic fit I'm having. <laughs> but the Acharyas explained that that Muslim king understood, no, this is not epilepsy. This bhakta, this devotee is manifesting some special symptoms of love of God. He appreciated that. So he excused him. He said, no, sir, this is something very special. You're relieved of your duty. You can, you can go home now. How was it that the Muslim king, who had no adhikari qualifications because of their ways, we won't go into detail, their ways of life, their eating habits, etc. How was it that he was able to recognize ecstatic symptoms of love of God and a Vaishnava by the mercy of the Vaishnava? Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastukoi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. This is the amazing result of even a lava matra, even a moment's association with a devotee, that you can begin the path of perfection. Just like a moment's association with a non-devotee can also take you on the downward path. Matir nukrishne patasvato va. Bhagavatam says because of their uncontrolled senses, persons who are too addicted to materialistic enjoyment, they gradually glide downwards to hellish conditions of life. It doesn't take a lot to get onto that path of Parvati Mar. We hear about Ajamil. Ajamil was a Paka Brahmana, young boy, Brahmana, many millions and millions and millions of years ago. He was going on some routine Brahminical duty through the jungle, through the forest. Pure in heart, pure in mind. And he just happened to glance one way or the other, and he saw a, a Sudra couple engaged in a loving embrace, kissing. Nowadays, this is nothing shocking. This, on the billboards in Mumbai, you see much worse. But being a very Paka Brahmana boy, this very much disturbed his mind. And to make a long story short, it so much disturbed his mind that Lava Matra, that moments of association with a couple embracing an illicit activity, that he fell down, he gave up his rabbinical ways, he married an unholy lady, a prostitute, he had children by her, he maintained her by devious means. Of course, eventually, by the mercy of the Lord, he named his son Narayan. He was always saying, Narayan, come here, Narayan, go there, Narayan, this, Narayan, that. And so at the moment of death, he called out, Narayan, my son. But Krishna took it. He's calling my name because he's calling it with such intensity, he gave him the benefit. And next life, he again became Paka Devotee Vaishnava, Shudhashatva, even more advanced than a Brahmin, with all due respect. He became Shuddhasat, the pure goodness, continued his life and next lifetime back home. But he had to experience such deviation because of lava matra. 
a moments of association in the wrong way with persons who were very much engaged in sense gratification. Same principle holds true, Prabhupada said, this Krishna conscious movement, it's, it's contagious. ha <laughs> We have a big crowd here, a big audience. If somebody has a cold, watch out, this is the cold season. You catch the flu and the cold. ha <laughs> Three days later, only half the people on the bus. Back home, taking the cold medicine under the bed, shivering. But Prabhupada said, this Krishna conscious movement, very nice how he coined this phrase. Prabhupada was so expert at coining these English phrases. He made this himself. Contagious in the good sense. Like he says in the Krishna book, in one particular section, I forget where it is, that when the pure devotees speak, their, their speaking appears like droplets of nectar in the air and it falls down on the heads of the audience and everyone becomes Krishna conscious. <laughs> so when devotees, advanced devotees speak, then it has an effect in the heart. What is the effect? That we let go of our cherished material desires that we've held on to for many millenniums and we embrace the process of Krishna consciousness. This is the effect of Sadhu Sangha. There's many ways that one can associate with sadhus. You can attend to them personally, you can help them bathe, you can dress them, you can cook for them, you can run errands for them. But really the most potent way of associating with sadhus is to shabda brahma, to hear from them. Prabhupada said, a saintly person, he sees through his ears, not through his eyes. So somehow or other, that Muslim king, he had the association of Mukunda Das. It's not, the Leela, as it's recorded, doesn't go into great detail. But you know the nature of devotees. In their routine work, even in ordinary life, they're always trying to slip in some Krishna consciousness. <laughs> they're always encouraging people to chant or take the shot. Or just rendering service to the Vaishnava. Agyatsu Kuriti was a physician. He was a, ph a physician. But he was a great devotee of the Lord. This is indicative of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy that anyone and everyone can become a devotee of Krishna. He doesn't have to abandon his work. He has to abandon that work if, it's, if it is extremely sinful. He has to abandon that work if it has he has to bend in his sinful ways. But Prabhupada himself never encouraged one to change the work, rather to change the consciousness. He didn't ask Arjuna to leave the battlefield. He encouraged him to stay on the battlefield and do his duty as a katriya, to uphold dharma, to be a devotee on the battlefield. So don't expect that only the advanced spiritual master, sannyasi gurus. No, you may find that the physician sitting next to you by sincere practice of Krishna consciousness, the businessman who donates his hard-earned wealth for the propagation of Krishna consciousness, the scholar who translates Prabhupada's books into this language or that, by the sincere practice of Krishna consciousness, may one day manifest some symptoms of love of God. Our own spiritual master, Sridhar Prabhupada, he was in the medical field of sorts. He was making medicines. He was in the pharmaceutical business. And one day, his beloved godbrother, Dr. Kapoor, came to visit him. And Prabhupada was in the laboratory mixing all the different chemicals and this and that for those medicines. And he said to Dr. Kapoor, who peeked his head in the door, my dear Godbrother, I have discovered the formula for love of God. Oh, Abai, you have discovered the formula for love of God. Oh, my Lord, let me come in and just 
As you're mixing all those chemicals, please tell me what it is. Prabhupada said, I know the formula. I have discovered the formula for love of God. I do not know how to apply it. So Dr. Kapoor said, oh, don't worry about that. Well, that's the next step. Let's just record that. What is it? Some potassium, some this and that. How much this and how much that and that. Prabhupada said, all right, I will tell you and then you can tell me how to apply it. Here is the formula that I have discovered for love of God. Dr. Kapoor had his pen there ready to write down this much grams of this, that much grams of that. So Prabhupada said, you ready? Yes, sir, bye. Write this. Trinada pi sunichana tora pi shahishtana amani na amani dena kirtana. This is the formula as given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The problem is how to apply the formula. <laughs> we all know the formula. Chanting the holy names of the Lord in a humble state of mind. Thinking ourselves more tolerant, lower than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige and ready to offer all respects unto others. We know the formula, but it's a lifetime or lifetimes of application until the disease in our heart is cured and the healthy condition of Krishna consciousness becomes manifest. So great devotees in all walks of life, they may sometimes manifest these ecstatic symptoms, sometimes not, generally not. Prabhupada said, if they manifest these ecstatic symptoms of love of God, the people may follow them for the wrong reason. We follow a sadhu because we want to learn from him. We want to get divya jnana. We want to get knowledge from him. This is the real reason we follow the sadhu, to hear from him. One time we were sitting with Sridhar Prabhupada in Paris, France. Prabhupada had just arrived at our temple after a long time away and we'd redecorated the whole building, renovated everything, and especially the deities were made to appear very beautiful. And Prabhupada came in and took darshan of the deities and looked around and appreciated so much, and he sat down on the Vyasasan. And I had the opportunity to be holding his kartals, and I gave Prabhupada his kartals. And Prabhupada was just gazing at the beautiful form of Radha Parasishwara, and he began chanting. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Prabhupada got to that phrase, he stopped. And he dropped the kartals and his hands started shaking. And being the neophyte devotee, I was, I was thinking, oh, Prabhupada's sick, something's wrong. But then I saw the tears come from Prabhupada's eyes, just like torrents of rain. We hear that expression, torrents of rain. I thought, well, maybe this is just some poetic license, some exaggeration. But I can tell you that was not the case. It wasn't that a few tears were just coming. They were dripping onto Prabhupada's yatri, onto his, his top piece. The sannyasis were this top piece, we call it in modern day language making it wet. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, how fortunate I am to be witnessing my spiritual master exhibiting symptoms of love of God. I felt like I had a window into the spiritual world for just those few moments. And after some time, Prabhupada came to and he said, chant Hare Krishna. So we started chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada said, thank you very much, and he went upstairs. That was all. So sometimes these things are there, sometimes they're not. But advanced devotee doesn't mean necessarily from a particular varna or a particular ashram. If one sincerely practices the process of Krishna consciousness, we'll see in due course of time. Any sincere devotee like Mukunda Das, who is simply a, a physician. He took care of the bodily ills. He was a great devotee of the Lord. Uh, this devotee, Mukundadas, he had one son. 
very exalted son. One time Prabhupada said, there are dynasties, there are families which produce pure devotees generation after generation. And Prabhupada said one time, my father was like that. <laughs> He wasn't necessarily referring to himself because in the dedication of the Krishna book, Prabhupada dedicates the Krishna book to his own father, Gaur Mohan Day, who Prabhupada said was a pure devotee of the Lord and imbibed in, within me a spirit of devotion for the Lord which was further increased by my spiritual father, Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Paribhuchukachara Osha Sri Simad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. But he referred to his father as a pure devotee. There are generations after generation after generation, such exalted souls, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that the unsuccessful yogi may take birth in a family of mercantile, wealthy mercantile people, so he doesn't have to struggle for the basic necessities of life. He can just take up his spiritual practices quite easily again. And Krishna describes various births, but he said the most prestigious birth of the unsuccessful yogi is to take birth in a family of transcendentalists. Birth is never by chance, it's always by destiny or by providence, by the will of the Lord. So in the case of these families which produce pure devotees, generation, this is the providence, this is the Lord's desire that such sadhus are there in society to give us direction. So this great devotee, Mukundadas, he had one son whose name was uh, Raghunandana. Raghunandana. Later he became Raghunandana Thakur. And there's a nice story to show how this boy was pure devotee from day one. Some of us are struggling to become pure devotees. There's others, Nitya, Nitya Siddhus, who come to this world, not like us. They're Krishna conscious, even in the womb. Gorgovinda Maharaj once gave a nice lecture. He said there are two types of souls, pure devotees, that come from the spiritual world. One pure devotee comes out of his intense compassion for the fallen souls of this world. They are not ignorant of this world. One time a disciple asked Prabhupada, do we remember, when we get back to the spiritual world, do we remember that we were in the material world? Prabhupada said, yes. But you remember it like a bad dream. Now if you have a bad dream, sometimes you don't want to go back to sleep. <laughs> You go back to the spiritual world, you remember, but it's such a bad dream, and life is so blissful there, all walking and dancing, talking and singing, and there's a festival every day. You don't come back. So Gogovindamara said there's two types of souls who come. One, understanding our fallen condition and the suffering that we're going through. We could speak for hours about that suffering, but elegance is truth spoken concisely. We will quote our spiritual master. Struggle for existence, the human race, the only hope is divine grace. Shri Prabhupada Ki. So some souls, they come out of their own compassion, but some souls are personally chosen by the Lord Himself when there's a great need, when there's a great necessity, when human society falls into the depths of adharma and sinful life becomes the norm. Just like nowadays, what people do now was unheard of 50 years ago. Nowadays, it's the norm. Meat eating, intoxication, illicit sex, gambling, and all their varieties of ways they're doing it. it. It's the norm, and the result is intense suffering. So, sometimes it is that the Lord sends someone from his personal camp. Just like 
the great Acharya Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He rejuvenated the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after 450 years, or let us say 400 years. It had fallen to disrepair because this is the material world. Everything is subject to deterioration. Sometimes it is. The teachings become covered like the river Saraswati. She's not manifest before our eyes. But the great Acharya Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he rejuvenated the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He started preaching Namhata, etc., etc., etc. As he was growing older, he was thinking, who will carry on this movement? That is the concern of every Vaishnava who participates in this missionary activity. Who will continue? Prabhupada asked, Giridha Swami, how will this movement go on when I am gone? And Mara said, Prabhupada, if we strictly follow the regulative principles and 10 or 16 rounds, it will go on. Prabhupada said, yes. He said, but uh, intelligence and organization, that is needed. <laughs> Just like you have in your Chaupati temple. Intelligence and organization. Then everything goes very smoothly. Everyone can very happily chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama,